Hi, this is Presh Talwalker, and today I want to discuss a very interesting problem, which is an example of how game theory solved a religious mystery. This is going to be a little involved, so I'm going to cut right to the chase and get to the problem. This appears as a bankruptcy problem in the religious document, the Talmud, and the setup is that a man owes debts of 100, 200, and 300, but he does not have enough money to pay everyone off. How should his estate be divided among these three creditors? Before we get to the, uh, the answer and uh, how game theory solved it, I just want to take a moment to say there really is no right answer. There's no one way that you can say the estate should be divided. Uh, there are many different ways you can divide it. It depends on social customs and norms. Uh, you know, when people go to restaurants, that's an example where people order different things and eventually the bill comes. Some people just decide to split the bill evenly. Other people decide to split it based on what they order. You could even have more, uh, you know, intricate things like we'll split the wine evenly, but, you know, you pay for everything else on your own. Uh, so there's no right answer. Uh, what will be interesting is to see that, you know, whenever you have a method, you're interested that it's consistently applied to everyone, and you all also are curious of what the rationale is. You know, I just gave you some examples in a restaurant that some people are fine with proportional division, which is paying for what you order. Other people, you know, they just like to split the bill evenly. They say, you know, there are 10 people here, divide the bill by 10. So how does the Talmud do this? Well, uh, the Talmud setup is actually based on the fact that this man has three wives, who, whom he owes 100, 200, and 300. And the, the division given in the text w was very curious, and people didn't, didn't understand it. Um, so we're going to talk about how the Talmud did it. The division in the text seems to depend on the size of the estate. So it depends, there's not a single method on how to divide up the money, but there's a method that depends on how big the estate is. So one example in the text is if the man died with a hundred, the solution is that each person should get an even split, which is 33 and a third. Interestingly, this is not what happens if, if the man dies with 300. In this case, there's a proportional split of 50, 100, and 150. You could understand this as something we might use in modern legal settings that, uh, you know, if a company goes bankrupt, you have to divide up the assets and you would give it to the creditors based on how much each of them claim. So the person who claims 300 obviously, you know, should get uh, three times as much as the person who has a 100 debt. This might make sense, but it's also already we're kind of seeing why, you know, why should the division be different between 100 and 300? Why should one be an even split and why should one be a proportional split? Even this solution itself might be okay, but things get really weird when the estate is 200. In this case, the text indicates that the split should be 50, 75, and 75. This really is very curious. Uh, it's, I can't, you know, off the top of my head, think of any justification for it in any common setting that we ever have. This is clearly not an even split of the money. It's not 200 divided three ways. It's also not a proportional split uh, where the person who has more you know, a bigger debt claim gets more money. You have this weird thing where uh, the person who has a debt of 100 gets 50 of that, and the other two people, they just get 75. So how, you know, this is, this is what was the religious mystery. It's how, you know, why would the Talmud have these divisions? And it actually was, was so puzzling that some people say that it's, you know, some academics actually said this was just a transcription error. There's no way that these three uh, cases could have been compatible. Uh, there just doesn't seem to be any logic to it. 
Now, before we get to the explanation, it'll be useful to summarize these numbers in a table. So I'm going to have a three by three table. Uh, the columns will be representing the three different people who have claims on the debt of 100, 200, 300. And we will we'll write out the Talmud division as follows. If you know, there's one case where the estate is 100 um, and each person's supposed to get 33 and a third. So we're going to fill out the three uh, columns. We're going to fill out the row as each person getting 33 and a third. We can do a similar exercise. Uh, you know, let's go to the next case where the estate is 300. In this case, the split is 50, 100, 150. Uh, we'll again fill out these rows corresponding to the people of claims 100, 200, and 300. And finally, we get to the, the weird case, uh, you know, when the estate size is 200. And now uh, we fill in these cells again as 50, 75, and 75. So this is a way we can summarize uh, for any, you know, given estate size, how much money should be given to the three different people who have different claims on debts. So this, this is, it's just, it's just a very weird table if you think about it. The first row is an even split, the last row is a proportional split, and the middle row just doesn't seem to have any sense. It doesn't reconcile with these methods at all. Uh, so how to explain these numbers? Well, in the 1980s, uh, professors Robert Ullman, who's now a Little Belt Laureate, and Michael Mashler wrote a paper claiming a game theory explanation on, on the logic behind these numbers. Uh, I provided the sources in the uh, description of the video. You should definitely check out the original uh, paper. It's a very interesting read, very nice explanation. Uh, that's what I'm basing this uh, entire uh, problem in, in the presentation. Uh, so let's try and see what they did, how they could have come up with this. Um, so we're going to go, just this is to explain sort of a game theory principle or just a social custom of how you divide things. Um, there's something they termed an equal division of a contested sum. So that means if two people are arguing about a certain amount, whatever they're arguing about, whatever is contested, you should split that between them. So that's the principle that we're going to, to use to try to understand the division. So let's, let's get to an example of this, uh, how this would work. So the, the justification for this is this is an, another example in the Talmud. So there's one person who claims that an entire garment is his and another person who claims ownership on half of it. What is the correct way, and you know, what's one possible way to divide this? according to the equal division of contested sum. So what we have here is uh, we have half of the garment is basically in dispute. We could say that's the sum that's contested. So what we want to do with equal division is we divide that half uh, between the two people. So the person who wants, uh, who claims to own a half will get one fourth. The other person will also get one fourth. And then there's the remaining half, which uh, only one person claims. Uh, so we add that other half in. So what ends up happening is we have a division that's one-fourth and three-fourths. Uh, the one-fourth is the equal division of the contested sum, and the remaining half is uncontested and given to the uh, person claiming the entire garment. Uh, we can summarize this division uh, kind of using the same tables we've been uh, you know, using before. Uh, so we can have the estate size, which is just the one garment, and that's a one whole piece of garment, and there are claims of one half and one. So the person who claims one half gets a fourth, and the person who claims one gets three fourths. So let's summarize this algorithm. What we need to do, it's three steps. Uh, we first determine what portion is contested, then we divide that evenly, and finally anything that's uncontested is given to the person who claims it. That's uh, simple. So we add up those numbers and we have a division uh, according to equal division of the contested sum. Let's uh, go through this, uh, a couple of examples of this. Uh, let's imagine two creditors 
uh, have claims of 100 and 300 and there's an estate that's uh, not not sufficient enough it's uh, 66 and two-thirds so how are we going to divide this according to the equal uh, division of the contested sum well clearly as you can see both of them claim you know more than the estate so the entire estate is in dispute and that means each of them should be getting half of it so that's 33 and a third going to each party uh, let's imagine you know we can make it a little more interesting uh, we increase the estate size so now it's 125 and that that's bigger than the claim of 100 so now it's not the entire estate of 125 that's in dispute uh, that first hundred of the estate is being claimed by both parties and that remaining 25 is only being claimed by the person claiming 300. So if we use the same three steps, we divide up the 50, uh, sorry, we divide up the 100 evenly as 50 going to each party and then we let the remaining 25 go to the 300 claimant. So this results in a division of 50 and 75. Uh, we'll just do one more example. Let's imagine the estate is 200. Uh, now we have similarly still the first hundred is contested by both. Uh, the next hundred is only claimed by the 300 person. So we go through the algorithm and we end up with the division of 50 and 150. We can summarize all these claims in the same sort of table uh, where we have claims of 100, 300 we have different estate sizes, and we end up with the division of how they should be given. Let's do more examples of this. This is too much fun. Uh, we can imagine different claim sizes. You know, these are going to be two examples, claims of 100, 200, uh, different estate sizes. Uh, we can also do claims of 200 and 300 with different estate sizes. I'm just going to keep going through ahead. I don't want to go through every example. Uh, we end up with these different tables and you can check and verify that these make sense but uh, now now comes the interesting part do any of these numbers in any of these tables look familiar and the answer is yes it's if you merge all these tables together you get the 3 by 3 table that's in the Talmud and that's where the mystery is solved is that basically the Talmud answer is an equal division of contested sum for each pair of creditors. So here are the different tables we came up with. Here's the big table from the Talmud. And just an example, we can see where the numbers from the 100 claimant come from. Uh, you can do the same thing for the 200 and the 300 claimant. And that's kind of why it's weird. Uh, you know, it's, uh, but that explains where all these numbers come from. I think the mystery is solved. Please subscribe to my channel. I do videos on math and game theory. You can also check me out on my blog, Mind Your Decisions, where I do weekly puzzles on Monday, weekly game theory posts on Tuesday, and at Twitter, at Presh Thank you.